Welcome to the Rum Revival. My name is Arminder. Today we're doing something a bit different. Now normally when a new rum comes out, I do a review of it and I taste it. But this time around, I'm actually going to be doing a blind tasting with a couple of other rums. A couple of weeks back, the newest release in Hamden Estates Great House series was released the 2023 edition. If you're not in the know, the Great House series is an annual release that typically comes out at the end of the year. Now, each release is a blend of different aged Hamden marks or distillates. Each time a new Great House has come out, I'm almost telling myself that I should taste it with the previous releases to figure out which one's my favorite, but I never get around to it. But hey, this time, I've got a YouTube channel, so we're totally doing it. Now here's how it's going to work. I'm gonna blind taste the 2023 Great House along with the previous three releases. Now I don't actually have the first release in the series, that's the 2019. That was a distillery exclusive that wasn't made available in the US. But I do have all the other releases. I have the 2020 release, I have the 2021 release, and the 2022 release. And then of course I have the newest release, the 2023. So this is the lineup for the tasting. Now all of these are molasses based, wild fermented, heavy pot still rums, ranging between 55 to 59% ABV, and they've been aged entirely in Jamaica. As with most of Hamden's rums, these are funky, pungent rums that I think are quite the treat. And given that each release is a blend of varying different marks and varying different ages, they all should, in theory, taste different. All right, so here are the four rums in a random order. I don't know which one is which. My wife came in, she took the glasses, labeled them with a letter. This is letter A, B, C, and D. Then took a random great house, filled it up in the glass, and took some notes down. And actually, there are a couple of post-its down below the bar cart here where she put the letter and underneath it, the actual year of that rum. We'll save that till the end. I'll sip through, I'll smell through the rums give some tasty notes, kind of compare them, eventually rank them from my least favorite to most favorite, and then we'll reveal what each letter is, and there you go. So I'm not gonna know what I'm drinking, but what I'm gonna do is flash on the screen the year or the bottle of the rum that I'm sipping at that moment, so at least you know what I'm drinking. All right, with all of that out of the way, let's finally get around to tasting some rum. We're gonna start off with letter A. I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little sweetness, like a sweet grape. There is some sharpness there as well almost a little bit like Dimetap or grape drink. There is a little hit of like allspice, like baking spices in general. So really honestly for this one, A, this is a, like a lot of grape. I'm gonna say like funky Dimetap. And we'll go on to smelling B. Whoa, <laughs> this right away smelled like corn nuts. Yeah, that is so weird. A little more cream of corn. I am, there's a faint little bit of like nail polish remover kind of in the back. That is B, let's smell C. I did so far of the three, C has like the lightest aroma. Though I just got a big whiff of alcohol fumes. That's great. Yeah, I'm gonna say if I had to describe this in a couple words, just honestly like light pineapple. Light, maybe a slightly grilled or charred pineapple, like a touch. Overall, just like generic Jamaican, funkier, higher proof Jamaican rum, kind of just that broad way of kind of describing it. That's kind of what this is. All right, let's smell letter D. Honestly, this one smells like the least like a Hamden rum. Like if you told me this was like a rum from Barbados, I'd believe you. So unless my wife is playing a trick on me and pulled out one of these four square exceptional cast series of rums and filled it in, which I don't think she would do that, but yeah, real talk, this doesn't really smell like a Hamden rum. Yeah, I'm getting more caramel, a lot more kind of oak aging notes than like some of the more funkier tropical fruit notes. And given the color too, I really feel like my wife is screwing with me. All right, my nose is totally kind of exhausted and kind of burnt out. I'm gonna take a second, and then we're gonna move on to actually sipping these rums. Woo. All right, we're gonna go and taste letter A. A little hit of kind of what I always call acidic vomit uh, with some of these Hampton rums. Got that like in the middle. The finish right now is like grape. I, you know, I got it on the nose. I'm getting it here. Grape, like grape medicine. Grape Robitussin, grape Dimetap. Low pineapple. Oh, actually, that pineapple is building. And it's like, we know what it is. It's the pineapple, like dried pineapple. Like there's a certain flavor to dehydrated pineapple. Kind of getting that here. Then I start getting that cherry, grape, diamond tap, robitussin note that I'm not the biggest fan of. Let's move on to letter B. A 
this is, mm, this feels more sour than that one. Ooh, but the finish has a little like a chocolatey note. Oh yeah, I like that. Wow, that's really strong tart sour note on well, my tongue is still like tingling. Woo! I think the finish is nice and it's kind of, of the reward for getting through all that kind of intensity of tartness, of sourness. This feels, of the two, maybe higher in proof. It's a little more intensity there. The tropical flavors are like the tropical fruit, the pineapple, it's more of like a phantom note on the finish. Not really strong. All right, let's give C a sip. Oh, this one, a little iodine, maybe a little briny. Of the three so far, this one dries out my mouth the most. Yeah, that's pleasant, it's nice. Definitely is maybe the most kind of pineapple-y, but also like the most like nice, straightforward, higher proof, slightly higher ester Jamaican rum. This is kind of like a prototypical Jamaican rum, in my opinion. Not bad at all. All right, we're moving on to letter D. Is this actually a Barbados rum? I think we're about to find out. <laughs> no, it's it's probably Jamaican rum. It's probably a great house. Like a little bit of pastry quality to it, like a sweet chocolate, a little bit of vanilla. It's still a little acidic and tart, like pretty much all of these, but this one feels like it has the most body of all four of them. This has a lot more kind of darker fruit notes, some raisins, some figs. There's some red berries to this as well. Now, would I advise other people to do something like this with their great houses? I don't know, man. Like, maybe not. Like, my tongue is fried. Like, it's like, it feels like it's been electrocuted a lot. Like, it feels so numb at this point. It's really hard to even talk. Like, my tongue just feels really fat. I feel like I've lost some taste buds in this process. Woo! I got so much heartburn. I thought this was gonna be one of my easier videos to put together. Boy, was I wrong. Okay, I think I've actually decided. Starting at the bottom of the list, the rum that I liked least was A. All right, so I've got the slip here that says A, and on the back side reveals 2021. Sorry, 2021. Next up is B, and that is 2022. Okay, huh, I am really surprised because I could have sworn in my mind that letter D, I in my pack of my mind, I was like, oh, it's clearly the 2022. Because I remember when this came out a year ago, how impressed I was and how I felt like it had a little bit of sweetness to kind of balance out everything else. Oh man, that is a total surprise, honestly. All right, and then in second place is C, the one that I thought was like a quintessential Jamaican rum, and that is the 2023. Look at that. This is the obviously the new release, and okay, you know, I had had it one time before this. I did a first impressions video on my Patreon. If you're interested in seeing what I do on Patreon, I have a video up where I did my initial impression. Like, clearly like this a lot, and I really appreciate how, how it encapsulates how much of what I think of when it comes to Jamaican rums, and it kind of does it in the best way possible. 2023, which of course means that the winner, D, is the 2020, the good old green label. I'll be real with you, <laughs> it's been years since I had the 2020, but that was my favorite, and totally did not actually expect that. Why I like it so much is it is the best of both worlds. It's got some Jamaican funk, funky tropical fruits, touch of tartness and a little bit of acidity, but it's balanced by some really nice barrel qualities, some caramels, some brown sugars, what I like sipping, that all those flavors kind of working in harmony is exactly what I like. I don't think there's any more 2020s available on the market at all. So I can't really recommend going out and trying to get your hands on any. Then really what that means is if I were to recommend one, I would say get the 2023. I think you're really going to enjoy it. It's a great all around Jamaican rum. Now, if for some reason you go to some sort of bottle shop and they happen to just have a bottle of the 2020 just sitting there collecting dust. Yeah, absolutely buy it because it is a treat. I really, really like it. All right, so that was my tasting of the Hamden Great House releases. What I'd love to know is, have you done something like this before? Do you have a favorite Great House release? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers.
I probably won't have feeling in my tongue for like the whole weekend. Awesome.